All right, guys, I got the little vlog update going right now. Turn the music down. It's all now getting some uploading. The whole vlog uploading. So I got uh, step through the jungle gym here. There, I put one of those. These things are pretty cool. I didn't realize that the ones for three eighths and half inch um, were the same for these T's. So the the three eighths grabs the outside part of this convoluted tubing, and then if you use it on half inch, it grabs the little valley of it. So they're the same. I figured that out, so I put one of those in there. Anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm. Uh, actually kind of beginning to run or not run but plan my I, I like to plan stuff especially since I don't feel like getting on and off the floor today uh, my wiring to go back to my tail lights tail lights turn signals stop lights and uh, I guess a license plate light also I better put one of those on because the uh, the nice gentlemen in the uniforms really like to harp on those here in California. So, what I'm doing is, I think I'm going to run, I actually think I'm going to run the line down this frame rail and then split it at the back uh, because I already have bolts in here for the little P-clamps trips there and you can see it right there that's holding my my brake line I could come off the top of this to hold another p-clamp to hold my uh, my tubing that I'm just gonna use some more of that black convoluted tubing that stuff's strong for my wires so I think I'm gonna run it down this frame rail because also when it gets back to where my pan hard bar is if you guys remember on the other side over there where I have my frame notched and boxed I have the bolts that hold my frame side of my pan hard bar bra bracket in so there's not as much room to run wiring through there whereas there's more room on this side so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to notch my cross member that's uh, holding my airbags up I can't show it because I got the bed on which is still looking fantastic I think um, I got my cross member that holds my airbag so I'm gonna have to notch the inside of it not very much just to run that little half inch tubing through so I won't lose lose anything I don't have to notch it much by the way it fits judge it by the way it fits so my wiring I planned all along to come out the uh, the, fi the fireman side, Jesus. The passenger side of my cab down into the frame rails because the generator is on this side. So that's where the bulk of my wire is, the generator. The, my temperature sensor's on this side, but I think there's a spot, it's too dark over here to look right now, but I think I can actually move my temperature sensor to that side of the motor. I gotta double check on that. And then my distributor points out that way. So my coil and everything's going to be on this side of the motor. Um, my oil pressure switch is right here. I can run that wire back there because my goal is I, I don't really want any wires seen. I want to avoid seeing wires as much as possible. The wires that will be seen will be wrapped in. Uh, the, it looks like the old fabric cloth wiring wrap that they used to use on these. Uh, they make some wire that has that on it. That's what I'm going to use. I plan on, I'm trying to remember who it was. It may have been Shevaholic, but I can't remember for certain right now. But he actually put a plug in that held all his wires. I, I think it was him. If it wasn't, I apologize, Matt. Um... I think it was him, but he put a plug in that had all his wires for his motor so he could unplug it and yank the motor out. So it, it looked like you unplug that, 
you unhook your uh, your fuel line, your exhaust, and your cooling lines, and you could yank the motor out. And I really, really dug that. I got to research on what kind of plug to use for that because I want to use the right one. But if I put it in this area right here, it's going to be away from the exhaust because the exhaust will be forward of there. And I may even, I'll build a little heat shield around it. But I got enough room right here to run my wiring loom through. So the wiring will come down here. I don't know exactly where it's going to come into the frame, but somewhere in this general area. Then the motor part will go forward here. The stuff for the back of the truck and the overdrive uh, wiring will go back this way. Oh, no, no. Overdrive will come from the front because it's got to go over the top of the transmission. Otherwise, it'll hang on the exhaust. But the tail lights will go back through here. Then they'll go up into this inside. This is a channel. They'll go up inside of there around to this side. Split off here. I'll have a T here. Some of it's, sorry, it's dark. We'll go back to the back for my lights. And then this is my actual brake light switch right here. So then all the wires here, they'll go over there and back. So that's the plan. I'm mapping it out right now. It's kind of cool. One of the magazines I really like got a pretty sweet uh, article on building your own wiring harness. I, I've messed with this stuff before, so I would say I'm slightly experienced. I'm by no means a pro, but I enjoy doing, I, I actually enjoy doing wiring. So this article was extremely helpful. It has all the diagrams and what you need. But uh, especially this, the whole turn signal thing can be kind of confusing. And then it also has a list of what gauges you need. But uh, what I'm doing is the stuff that only requires uh, 16 gauge, I'm just up into 14 since I think I have enough 14 gauge wiring to do it. Um, I haven't figured out which one color is going to be for right side, the other color is going to be for left side. So they'll run up, you know, oh, that was the other thing that um, will stay over there is the wiring that goes to my headlights, marker lights and that stuff up front will be, will go up through that channel as well. But uh, this will be, uh, I'm just going to kind of start planning this out, doing some measuring, figure out if I have enough wiring. The dude I bought the wiring from was creepy as hell, but, uh, you know, he had a pretty good deal on wiring. You know, it was just kind of a creepy guy. You know, he lives in his van, and I'm not saying everybody that lives in a van is creepy, but this guy was definitely creepy. So, but I'm not scared of him. So, I go by myself and pick it up if I need to. The swap meet's not too far from here. So, he said he always has wiring because he gets, I can't remember exactly how he said he gets it, but it's some kind of bulk discount because he does wiring on big trailers or some something, something along those lines but uh he had a nice spool of 10 gauge there but i don't need that yet so that'll be that'll be all i have to buy i need to buy a spool of 10 gauge and then i need to get a small spool of 8 gauge because i like i generally go one gauge higher numerically lower than i need because i don't want wiring problems I don't want to burn through anything or anything like that. But So, I've been yapping for nine minutes now. i got to get some work done before uh, lunchtime. So, you guys all take it easy. I'll see if I get something done here, and then I'll show you guys. So, talk to you later. Be good. Got sick of not being able to find that stuff wherever I stashed it in a drawer or whatever. My old calipers, my scissors, my compass, my dividers, a couple pencils and stuff like that. Screw to come to the wall. All right, so kind of setting up my tubing to go across this cross member here. And uh, let me turn this fan off. Temperature's creeping up. Uh, so I got these, but they don't fit real well inside here the way they're set up. So what I'm doing is, 
I'm just kind of modifying them, clipping off one end so they'll mount like this. And this thing's nice and snug. I can even give it a little pinch if I need to, but it's not moving. So I have a bunch of these. So, you know, in the interest of, also I found a diagram, a, wi a diagram, wiring diagram for these, for this truck. So anyway, that's just something I'm doing to just kind of modify something that I had to make it work. But that's going to work pretty good. That'll hold it nice inside that uh, cross member there. So anyway, back to work. All right. So my idea was great. Everything was, uh, you know, kind of lining up the way I, I thought everything should work. But uh, when I was getting ready to put the center mount on, I found that hole in the center and I thought, well, I'll just go to one side or the other. Something in the back of my brain was saying, no, you can't do that. I couldn't figure out what it was. Then I remembered this. Parking brake cable. This goes through there. That's the keeper for it that holds it. Then this threads in to a little clevis thing and goes back to each brake drum. So that's not gonna work. So uh this in the bed of the truck in case I need to use it for maybe I don't know, I'm gonna use my other hand here. Sorry for the shakiness here. Alright. So Back to the drawing board. I'll figure something out. Since it's that thin tube that comes out, I may be able to go on the back side of it. Uh, kind of like the whole protected thing, but you know, it's not that big a deal. It's going to be in tubing, so it'll be fine. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to start thinking about this again. It, uh, it used to go down in this channel here with the brake line and underneath the, the transmission down there. But the problem there is if you get any kind of leak that just fills with fluid and dirt and the shoot for no leaks, but you know, that doesn't always work. So yeah, I'll figure it out. I may have to use one of the back cross members to run it across or I just may have to do something different entirely. We'll see. I'll get it figured out. Uh, when I do, I'll show you guys. So if it's not tonight, it might be tomorrow. Uh, either way, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Be good.